Well, here we are again, and today I'm going to talk about another of the effects of the 2024 Little Ice Age that people may well have not thought of properly, and that is storms. Now, we're not talking about regular storms here. We're talking about the type of storm that just carries on and carries on for days, perhaps weeks, perhaps months. Now, these are rare at the moment, and even in the Northern Hemisphere where I live, the last one of these was in 1963 when I was five years old and it was a huge snowstorm with violent winds that lasted for seven weeks. So what do we know about these storms? Let's have a look. Well, we know that completely permanent storms exist on other planets. For example, the Great Red Spot on Jupiter is a persistent level of very high pressure that causes storms all around it and it's been running for around about 300 years with no sign of stopping. So a permanent storm is certainly possible. But hang on a minute. Did you know that there is actually a permanent storm, or a semi-permanent storm at any rate, on the planet Earth? Yes, there certainly is. At Catatumbo, in Venezuela, near Lake Maracaibo, there is a storm that is there for 260 days of the year. And this is a fully fledged lightning storm with wind, rains and all the rest of it. And it's caused in exactly the same way as other storms are caused. Now, how are these storms caused? Well, they're caused by heat. They're caused by temperature difference. And this is important to remember because they're really caused by the difference in air pressure between one place and another. And the reason for the difference in air pressure is the heat of the surface. Now, as we all know, hot air is less dense than cold air because hot air rises. Just think of a hot air balloon. And what actually happens is that the air is heated up, usually over a body of water. And the reason for this is that water in the sun gets a lot warmer, paradoxically, than the land does. And it transfers the, water, the warmth very efficiently to the air by means of evaporating water molecules. And these water molecules rise up in the atmosphere. And in essence, this is the way that hurricanes are fueled. Um, because if you think about it, once they start moving, due to the actual spin of the earth, the Coriolis effect. Just like the water going down the drain in your bath, they swirl around and around. And once they get going, it takes a lot to stop them because there are millions of tons of water wrapped up in these microscopic granules of water that are whirling around in the air. And it's just like a gyroscope. And that's why a hurricane's path is in a series of long sweeping curves and then when it gets to land and it destabilizes because all the water's falling out it acts just like a gyroscope would it stutters around all over the place and this is why hurricane paths are very very difficult to predict now because these differences in air pressure are caused by temperature it's important to remember that you'll get just as much pressure difference if the warm air is at minus five degrees and the cold air is at minus 10 degrees, as you would do if the warm air was at 25 degrees and the cold air was at 20 degrees, which is often the case with a hurricane. So what does this mean for us if the world cools down a lot? Well, during the solar minimum and uh, the projected ice age of 2024, what will happen is that the Northern Hemisphere will cool a great deal and the Southern Hemisphere not so much. The Southern Hemisphere might only be on average one or two degrees colder than it is at the moment, but the Northern Hemisphere might be as much as 10 or 20 degrees colder than it is at the moment on average. So this means there is an immense supply of warm air in the South. There is an immense supply of cold air from the north. So all around the equator and definitely in what is now the hurricane band, 
you will see huge storms. And normally these storms basically they blow themselves out because the air mixes off to some sort of an average and there isn't, if you like, an almost infinite supply of hot air or an infinite supply of cold air. But in the case of where an entire hemisphere is colder than the other, you're going to get a ring of storms around the entire planet, which basically are probably going to be semi-permanent at least, if not actually permanent. Now there is some suggestion that this has happened before. Early sailors in the 14th century who tried to cross the Atlantic and get to the Americas found themselves consistently beaten back by winds. And many ships were lost, many expeditions were destroyed, but there is a diary from a Portuguese navigator of the period which mentions winds so strong that men could not stand in them and that those winds lasted for weeks, if not months. And he suspected that they were still going on when his ship left the area, and the only reason it wasn't that the storm um, blew itself out, it was their ship got blown so far that it went out of the range of these storms. So we know that in that time um, it was quite a lot colder than it is at the moment. And you have to remember that the Earth has been a lot colder than it is now, it's also been a lot warmer and we've only had the experience of climate when it's been fairly temperate we're in an interglacial period at the moment in fact we're at the end of an interglacial period if you don't believe me look up the glacial periods look up their average lengths and you will find we are right at the end we're actually slightly overdue for an ice age a proper ice age not a mini ice age and this is one of the reasons why some scientists are starting to think that perhaps the 2024 phenomenon won't actually go away. Perhaps it will set in and become a lot deeper. Now, naturally, an awful lot of effects come with these storms. We're not just talking about thunder and lightning. We're not just talking about extreme winds. What we have to remember as well is storm surges. If you remember in the recent hurricane, the um, various areas lost an awful lot of sea level. The sea just seemed to disappear and that is because in the centre of the hurricane where there was a very low pressure area, the surface of the sea bulged upwards. And that water of course has to come from somewhere. Now, if you can imagine these storms around the equator continuously being created and destroyed, then you can imagine that this is going to cause some pretty huge waves in the oceans. And this is going to be one of the effects we're going to see. They won't be like tidal waves, but they'll certainly be big enough to destroy a lot of shipping. So as if sea transport across the equator wasn't difficult enough already with these winds, we're also going to have giant waves to contend with. And of course, air travel is going to be completely disrupted. Air travel in many areas is going to be completely out of the question. Um, so large areas are going to be cut off. And uh, yeah, it's not going to be a very nice time, to be honest. And one of the other little evidences for permanent storms in the hurricane belt is archaeological. Before around about the uh, 11th century, there is evidence, archaeological evidence, of occupation, human occupation, in those areas. And then there's nothing. Right the way up until the 15th century, and suddenly you've got settlements and everything starting to appear again. At about the same time, America was kind of discovered by the old world, and colonisation began. And it's my contention that this wasn't a coincidence, that colonisation didn't just spontaneously happen. People have been trying to get to the Americas for an awful long time, and um, they'd found it impossible because of the winds, because of the storms. And uh, during this period, you had what are called trade winds. And those trade winds that were powering the great tea clippers to cross around the Horn 
have now almost disappeared. They're still there, but they're nowhere near as violent as they were. And uh, this is another pointer to the fact that once there was continuous winds and storms in the area, and now there no longer is. So I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you very much. Drivers who'd abandoned their vehicles had taken shelter from the blizzard. When it was over, five feet of snow had fallen and it was known they were desperately short of food and blankets and that the power had failed. Whitten Down wasn't equipped to take on a hundred cold and hungry visitors. The Marines couldn't get through on the first day, and nor could the snow plows. It was learnt that most of the castaways were spending the night in the village schoolroom. Next day, the snow plows were at it again. By the time the clearance squads got through, a hundred drivers had had a night to remember. It was the night when the southwest broke another weather record. Snow on the ground for 45 consecutive days. But by now, the hard-hit southwesterners were being warned of another new danger. A quick thaw with high winds and floods. The floods came.